How y'all doing today? I hope you're having a great day. Um, today's episode is about creativity and how can you get some? <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I don't have a creative bone in my body and I can't do those sorts of things. I get into a little bit of that um, thinking later. Really, let's start with the definition. A lot of people think of creativity as being purely art related, whereas really it's the ability to take different things that we can see, hear, taste, or touch and make something new from a disparate set of objects, ideas, uh, sounds, foods. That means that it can be something uh, entirely practical, work-related, or in a maker sort of way, like furniture or doing stuff in your yard, like creating planting beds or different things like that. Or it might be more uh, ephemeral, something like music or art or writing. You know, thinking of creativity in a broader sense, I think is an important place to start. Coming back to that idea of, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I, I hear people say that a lot. You know, I've had several art shows over the years and people, oh, I can't believe that you do this stuff and I wish I could, but I just can't do anything like that. Uh, I was actually talking to somebody at work a while back about quilting, yeah. And they described that as a non-creative activity. And I'm like, yeah, but you've, you've created these patterns that you quilt onto these large pieces and they take a long time and you know, all these things and like, that's creative, you've created something. And so they were like, oh, I guess maybe I am. I've led art workshops at times. People are like, well, I wouldn't even know what I was doing. I'm like, just put something on there, it'll be fine. And, and they create these amazing things. All of that sort of attitude reflects what I would call a counter creativity. Characteristics in my own makeup, people, places, and things in my life that preclude me from pursuing something creative. Where does that arise from? A lot of times the opinions of others can stop us from pursuing creativity. Uh, negative self-talk at the same time of, why should I do this? This is a waste of time. It's not productive. It's not gonna make me any money. I should be doing this set of responsibilities, all of that kind of thing. Fights against that that inherent um, childlike um, desire to make something or do something that's purely for the fun of it. Those are kind of those life traps that can really constrain you. Um, another one that I would say happens a lot is, well, I would love to do that if I only had drafting table or the right pens or the right kind of musical instrument. If you're making, you know, I need this kind of table saw, I need these kind of tools and I can't afford them and I don't have time to get them and I don't have anywhere to put them, like that kind of thinking, which I have fallen prey to in the past also. I would say, first off, the opinions of others, just who cares? <laughs> you know, who cares? There are people that are important in our lives that uh, that certainly we need to take their thoughts into consideration. When it comes to pursuing creative things, I think less so. Uh, I've had a lot of people over the years be like, well, that's a waste of time for you to do that. Why don't you do this instead? Why don't you do this other thing? And uh, I have learned over time that those people don't dream the dreams that I have. They don't think the way that I think and therefore it's unsurprising that they would think that they had the ability to tell me what I should do in my life. Therefore, try not to listen to that as much as you can. Um, there's also a lot of people out there who wish they could have done something and never did and then spend a lot of time kind of stepping on other people who are actually out there doing it. Learn, if you can, to 
at least not talk to those people as much <laughs> or not tell them what you're doing or thinking about doing. Pursue it for your own purposes. Um, negative self-talk is another thing like that where I can internalize those messages many times um, learned from mentors or parents or grandparents or whomever it might be that uh, pursuing creative things is a waste of time. Those kind of voices, I hear them too and I've learned to, again, kind of tune them out and just do it anyway. Uh, and that tools trap thing of like, I need the next coolest thing. Everybody loves to buy things like that, but you don't really need it. And you don't really know if you need it. Just use what you have and do the best you can. And then you'll figure out what kind of tools you might need later. If we can kind of think about moving away from that counter creativity uh, vibe that that is out there to kind of reject that and be open to inspiration that's a really important thing uh, inspiration can seem completely nonsensical and yet it's critical to the whole thing you know if somebody's thinking about wow i saw this really cool table on a tv show and i thought I should make something like that. Or somebody's thinking, you know, I've always wanted to write a short story and I have an idea that's rattled around in my head for a long time. I should do something like that. Like listen to that voice. And there's, there's a myriad of creative things that come from that. Like, um, hey, I would like to be um, a better musician. I would like to create some art and maybe have an art show sometime those kinds of inspirational ideas, just let them play out. Don't reject them. Maybe journal about them. Think about like, how would I do that? You can be open to inspiration in other ways too. Um, time to think. My life for a long time was very tactical in nature in that I had a lot of responsibilities and they came at me all day, hours of the day and night and I had to take care of these things, or I felt like I needed to take care of them quickly so that I could check them off my list. Uh, or in some cases, because they were really important and I had to do that. Having some time to sit back, think and reflect, I think is important. And if you can devote some of that time to just the wonder of looking at what sort of things you might wanna do. There's a great book called The Artist's Way. In that book, they talk about a thing called The Artist Date, which is where you take yourself by yourself and go to a garden in town. You go to an art museum, any number of things. You just go walk in nature someplace. Uh, those kinds of activities. You go walk around and look at houses or whatever it happens to be for an hour or two and trying to commit to doing that like once a week or something like that. Those kinds of activities can give you the space and time uh, and air to be more open to inspiration from the things you see. One of the things that I do, if I see something that's like, wow, that's a really cool plant, or wow, that's a really interesting building. Hey, I saw some junk on the street and I thought it was just an interesting configuration. I'll take a picture of that and that can preserve that inspiration in that moment so that I can potentially use it later. I've done things like, record hailstorms and thunderstorms and wind and bugs, uh, cicadas. We're getting ready to have a mass cicada outbreak, according to everyone. I don't know why, it just was interesting to me, so I decided to capture that in that way. If I wasn't open to inspiration in those moments, and there are plenty of times when I'm not, then I wouldn't have done it. Uh, another factor is rest. Getting enough sleep is also important because I feel the pressures of everything more so when I'm tired. People who support you are also important. The people who support you, like talk to your creative impulses with them. Uh, I have friends that I've called up and be like, you know, I'm thinking about doing this, but I don't think it's, I don't know that everybody would want that or would like it or whatever. And they're like, hey, just do whatever you want. It's art, be you. Uh, and that goes for other sorts of creative approaches too. I talked about earlier how it's not just about art, but work-related things where it's like, hey, this might be kind of a risky 
shot at something, but I think it's really intriguing. I should try to execute it. Talking to other people about that and having them be like, yeah, that's a great idea, give it a shot. Or, hey, that's an interesting idea, maybe modify it a little bit like this. You know, those kinds of things are really important. But ultimately, it's an inside job. Like you have to own it and decide that I'm gonna pursue these kinds of things. There's also other sorts of resources that you can use to find inspiration. Um, authors, I mentioned the book, The Artist's Way, but any number of books that you read. I'm reading this Arnold Schwarzenegger book right now. I, frankly, it's quite inspiring, <laughs> which may, which may uh, put me in a box of some sort, but I found it quite inspiring because he's talking about like a lot of things. Like if you dream something, that's your dream. Visualize that and pursue it. And these are the ways that I have done that in my life. Now, I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger by any stretch of the imagination, but you know his story and the way that he describes that is uh, quite inspiring in that regard. There are many, many other sorts of books and YouTube channels and music that you can draw inspiration from. One of the best sources of inspiration for me for a myriad of things was the old Mythbusters show. Uh, with Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman, you know, just seeing them like, well, I don't know, let's try this. That kind of thing um, really gives permission. And there's so many artists out there and there's so many creatives and makers of different sorts that you can find uh, on YouTube that, that are just amazing. Going to music concerts, going to theater, you know, seeing plays, all that sort of stuff, listening to uh, really kind of digging into the lyrics of songs. Also, particular phrases tend to create sort of an inspirational sense in me. You know, it creates that vibe where, okay, you know, they did this, maybe I can do it too. Gatekeeping against creativity is something that I absolutely despise. And so, you know, feel like you can pursue that. Uh, you know, look for the people who support you and don't gatekeep you know, frankly, they're just toxic. I, I don't I don't appreciate gatekeeping in any form. How do you put all this kind of stuff into action? I stepped away from creativity in a traditional sense for a long time in my life. And at some point I came back to it. It was a really difficult time in my life. And I started to do some small drawings and small pastel pieces that I had. I had some pastels laying around in a box. I had some paper and I just started doing them really because by doing that work in that moment, I wasn't thinking about all of the problems that I could not solve in my life at that moment. So I could step away for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and just focus on drawing this thing, whatever it happened to be that came out, you know, that wasn't for anybody else. I wasn't going to show them to anybody else. I wasn't going to do anything. It was just like a way to meditate almost. Step outside of all of my day-to-day -day problems and put my focus on this one singular thing that I was going to do. Really the point of that was is it doesn't have to be for anybody but you. And really you don't Try not to get into the mindset of, I could make this art, I could make this table, I could do this thing, and then I could monetize it somehow. Nothing wrong with monetizing things, but for me, the pursuit of creative impulses, whether it be in writing, I'm working with a co-author right now, we're writing a book. Did we happen to end up getting a contract to publish that book? Yes, we did. We'll talk about that later in a different video. It wasn't about that. It was like, hey, here's this kind of cool idea that's an extension of this other thing that we did. Maybe we could do this and let's put it together and then we'll throw it to people and see what happens. And ultimately it was end up accepted and, and we have a contract to write this book. But it, it wasn't about that in the beginning. It was more about the idea of doing it and the collaboration. Play around and experiment. You know, it's okay. Like. I've made a lot of art. I've written a lot of things. I've created a lot of databases. I've kind of cobbled together processes. They might not work, <laughs> you know. A substantial minority of the pieces of art that I've made over the years, I, I'm like, eh, it, it's not ready for prime time. 
so, you know, I don't, I put that aside and I do something else. A, a kind of a secondary point to that is that I used to just kind of like, well, that's no good, I'll just throw it away. And that's fine, if you wanna do that, it's not some precious thing. You, it's just an expression of your creativity in that moment. But think about, you might keep them, and there's a few other things that you could do with them, is recycle them into other things, or you might go back to it years later and rework what you have. Um, and I think this applies to art or other sorts of pursuits that are creative too, is I might have some idea for writing something or, or a song idea or something that I'm writing or whatever it happens to be, and oftentimes uh, a lot of good results have come out of that for me. But that idea of playing and experimenting and there being no stakes involved, like I'm just messing around. I got some um, new pens and I'm gonna play around with them and see what happens. Like they used to say on Mythbusters, failure's always an option. And that's okay because you learn something from doing that. And more importantly, you've taken that time to have that meditational creative moment that has all sorts of untold benefits. It's okay to be a little obsessed also, to get really excited about it. It's okay for many of us, that kind of creative flow state can really be inspiring in and of itself and a pursuit in and of itself. Strange analogies. Uh, I'm gonna talk about creating art, running, and also creating databases. <laughs> it seems like a disparate set of things, but all three of them, when I'm really kind of in the zone of doing whatever that is, the feeling is the same. Sometimes experiences and observations can accumulate over time, producing the opportunity for creative insights into a range of things that we might not expect. The flow state is the same. I'm not thinking about much of anything else except that singular thing. In the case of running, that's good because if you're not paying attention to exactly what you're doing, you're picking your feet up and you're moving, you can trip over things and fall. Um, and I've done that <laughs> because I was thinking and running. It's okay to get excited about that and to want to feel that more, but a little obsessed, obviously. You know, you can't throw your life away because you got excited about claymation or something. Use what you've got at hand. Don't buy a whole bunch of stuff because you don't really know the tools until you have had a time to work with tools that are less useful. Um, as you grow and continue to pursue something, then you'll be like, you know, I could use a better knife. I could use a better brush. I could use a better instrument. Get the best thing that you can, but if you don't have anything, you know what? I mean, if you're talking about art, here's a tool. You, we got pencils right here. Here's another tool. I've got this right here. You know what? You can do stuff in words that's pretty cool. Use what you have, do the best you can with what you've got, and just make something. It's okay if you've got your talk. If you're talking about statistical stuff, you don't need to buy the fanciest software ever. Get something that works. Try that out. Figure out the limitations over time and experience, and then get the next thing that comes to mind. I think also in that same vein, you know, thinking about creating a space. Creating a space where you can do this work. I've got some B-roll here where I'm showing particular spaces that are devoted to different creative activities in my house. And they're not giant spaces, but they present the opportunity to immediately pick up the tools that I need to do the work at hand. Uh, I think that's important where I'm not having to be like, well, I'm thinking about doing this, so now I gotta go and get all this stuff out. Go down in the basement and get some boxes out and set up a table and all that. That kind of thing just kills my buzz. <laughs> so what I need is the things are there, they're neat, they're organized, I can see everything. Uh, and then I can approach whatever the project is right from the beginning. Like I've got the stuff that I need to do whatever it is right there. It doesn't have to be like a big mess or anything. It can be, neat and tidy and organized, but have some spaces where you can do that kind of thing, or just even just one space. 
uh, and adjust that space as needed when you need to shift things around or a process isn't working like you want. You know, think about that, that kind of uh, holistically and in a tactile way. How does it feel? You know, what things are sticky and, and not working as well for you as you might want. Adam Savage's Tested Channel is a great resource. He talks about that kind of thing a lot. Also in his book, Every Tool's a Hammer, uh, he talks a lot about like, this process, it worked for me for a while, but there's some little points that I notice that aren't working for me as well as they did. Noticing that and then changing it, that's creativity also, in my opinion. Uh, I think that, that creating that space and setting it up and then adjusting it as you go, but do it. If you have a creative project in mind, spanning those realms of different things that you could do, it could be that you're at work and you're like, I see this process, the way that we're doing it, and it's not, it's not getting at what we want. And I believe it could also be more efficient if we adjusted this or took this piece from this other process that we have and move it over here and make it analogous to what we're doing in this space. That's creativity, 100% it is. Giving yourself the freedom to reject the idea that, well, we've always done things this way and it's really hard to change stuff. Yeah, it is, but if, if you never change anything, then what are you gonna get? Nothing from nothing's nothing. Uh, and it could be that you produce something that is way more effective. At least it's not gonna be worse. Stick with it, but don't beat yourself up if you miss a day or two of kind of trying to do this, or even a week. Life happens, but if you allow yourself to feel and be open to that inspiration, I think that uh, you'll find that creative opportunities come up far more often than you would think. So I wish you all the best in your own creative journeys. In the comments, you can share what kinds of things that you find inspiring, ways that you can get into a flow state. Absolutely love to hear about that. Likes, shares, subscribes are definitely welcome. Appreciate your time today and hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for spending time with me. Have a great one, thanks.